candy. Nice black eye. Tom Thomas, did you fall? How did you hurt your eye? I had a big fight with Johnny. Oh, wow! How could you? What was the fight about? We argued over who's cooler, a racer or a boxer. A race driver's cooler. Of course, that's what I said to him. But Johnny had to prove Vince a boxer. Well? He proved it all right. Can't you see? You don't prove anything at all by fighting. What a profession, a boxer. Yeah, now your dad, he's got an amazing profession, a journalist. He gets to travel to different countries and brings back all sorts of funny stuff. They even show them on TV. No. What do you mean? Boxers are cooler. Everyone's really afraid of them. Don't be gloomy, Tom Thomas. Have a candy. I've got a good idea. How about a taste tester? That's the best job. And what is he testing? A taste tester is someone who tests the tastes of drinks and food. Yeah, how come? They want to find out if the food is delicious and what all the flavors are in it. Super! What a great profession! But a taste tester is not a job just anyone can do. I can do it. Then let's check. So open your mouth and then close your eyes. what the flavor is inside of this piece of candy. Mm, strawberry. That's right. Good job, Tom Thomas. And this? That tastes like orange. You missed that one. It was lime. Yeah, Tom Thomas. If you want to be a food taster, you're going to need to do some serious practicing. Let's do it. Raspberry? You got it! Simka, how do they get the candy to be hard on the outside and filled with liquid on the inside? Don't get distracted, you're training! Yeah! Hard candy is made like this. First, a sweet syrup is cooked until it is thick and stretchy. Then the mixture is pulled into long, hollow tubes that are like noodles. As the tubes cool down, they start getting harder. And it's right then that the tubes are filled with the soft, fruity center and then cut into pieces. It all has to be done quickly before the tubes have a chance to get totally hard. And that's how candy is made that is hard on the outside and soft on the inside. It could be strawberry, only I just can't tell anymore. Ouch! What's wrong? My tooth. Was I hearing things? Or did someone yell? Mm. Oh, I got it. Come on, let's take a look at your tooth. A taste tester has to be the most delicious profession in the world. They taste all sorts of things like cheeses and chocolates and decide which ones taste better. Everything is tested for taste, even water, because different waters taste differently. There are also testers who don't test food and drinks, but rather they test the smells of things like deodorants or perfumes. Not everybody can become a really great tester. First, you have to be able to tell apart all the different tastes and smells. You also need to know when it's time to stop, or you can make yourself sick and lose your ability to tell things apart. That's the reason why taste testers only take very small bites of food and very, very little sips. If you're gonna have a bad tooth, it's good to have a mom who's a dentist. That's true. She's a good dentist. She'll fix it in no time. She'll pull that tooth right out. So, did she pull it out? Nah, she just gave me some medicine to gargle. Your tooth, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts a little. Hey, 
now I definitely know who's cooler than a boxer. Who? Who else? A dentist. Even boxers are afraid of going to the dentist. The armor. 2, 23, 24, 25. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you going to look for me? Armor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? Nolik went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. 
There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that you're knight. <laughs> Looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the short circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not going to play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down. This is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, don't touch. touch. Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks. And they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they're turned on. And bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look. Now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <laughs> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <sighs> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself, now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out, or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up! 
Hooray! Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait! I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. <laughs> The suction cup. Where's Professor Eugenius? Did you see him? Not yet. Strange. He told me he'd be here today to conduct some tests. Rampus, right here under the glass. There's a note. Hmm. Dear friends. That means the note's for us. That's because Professor Eugenius can always count on us. I'm off for a conference today. So what should we do? While I'm away, please keep an eye on each of my tests. There's the wristwatch. And where is it? It's right there. Look! How come the watch is in the water? So the fish can know what time it is? No, like, don't be silly. This is the test he made for the watch. You see? It says water resistant right there on the back. That means that water shouldn't get inside of it. I see. So the professor needs to check if it will work underwater. Understand? I, yep, I got it. The watch is working. So now, the doorbell test. We'll go look. It's over there. What's that thing doing? It tests the button to see how fast it wears out. <laughs> to check the quality of appliances, toys, sporting goods, or just about anything, they need to undergo serious testing. Take, for instance, telephones. They need to be tested with both heat and cold because they have to work in places as hot as Africa and as cold as the Arctic. Computers are tested to make sure they can be shaken and rocked, too. That way you can be sure they'll work on a desk at home, or outside in the park, or while you're taking a ride. Different kinds of products need different kinds of durability tests. For example, athletic shoes and car tires are rubbed and squeezed over and over to see how long they are going to last. Yes, testing's very important. Without testing, a machine or appliance could let you down at the very worst moment. If guests come to visit once a week, and once every month a hooligan comes, pushes the doorbell, and runs, then I figure this doorbell will last right around 400 years. That's long. The doorbell is still working. That's very good. And also, uh... What? I don't know. We need to turn the note over to read the end. But how? Oh, raise the glass, that's all. should find a suction cup. A suction cup? Suction cups are made out of rubber or other elastic materials. When a suction cup is pressed against a smooth surface, the air inside is squeezed out. The air outside wants to get back in, and so it pushes down on the cup. The rubber edge of the cup won't let the air leak in, so the outside air keeps pressing down and the cup keeps on sticking. And that's how a suction cup sticks to a surface by using the power of air. Wait a minute. I know where there's a really big suction cup that we can use. It's a huge suction cup, Nolik! Diddy, diddy, diddy! Well done, Nolik! Only we need to hurry before air gets under the suction cup and it unsticks! My suction cup will never unstick! Well, let's see what it says here. Zipka, you'd better hurry! And make sure nothing gets broken here in the laboratory while I'm away. Huh, and what could get broken around here? Ah, the glass! Look out! Yeah, 
so much for that. And who's going to clean up all this broken glass? <laughs> you don't know? Nolik. He told us to use that suction no, cup. No, Simka. She was reading way too slow. Listen, there's no need to fight. I came up with the idea of the suction cup. I should clean this. Come on now, Grampus. We'll clean up this mess. Professor, I still think the suction cup was a great idea. The fan. Pass him on the left. Step on it. Now pass him on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean, too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nolik. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat. Eat them. Ha ha! And how come you never told me anything about big sea eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared! <laughs> <laughs> All right, scaredy cat. Let's keep going. like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. That part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom Thomas! Turn it on! Tiddy! And then 
suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl, and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah. The airbag. Gonna be late. We'll make it. Whoa! Oh wow! Hey, slow down there. <laughs> I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> well, well, fire. Again, risking your life. <laughs> And super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, Fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt. Because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection. Like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. <laughs> Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah. But how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! Grampus, he needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid! As you fixies say... Today's lesson is done. 
where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> Oh, wow! Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design he used there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so... Caution and care make accidents rare. The spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masio went out to visit our fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late. And the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off. But he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part broke down. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tom Thomas! Tidish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is 
working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we put the part back into the computer, and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Marcia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy! Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Nyeh, -uh, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells and squirrel skins and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins, or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it, and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, you can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins! Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. Hut! 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 What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing! Oh, oh. Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. Bank. What? Just smash your piggy bank. 
but I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik. I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. <sighs> Whipped cream. <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm hmm, that sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait, for me! Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious, white, fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. <laughs> No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome! Bring it down! A little more! Perfect! Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Oh. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We over. 
never did it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right. Katya's bringing a cake, and she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The tin can. Well, what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? He's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh... You're here, and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. 
and be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? The instructions. doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah, instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! Instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like, I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without him. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as in ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. 
Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look, we need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is, you gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have, uh, must have what? Must have what? Look, here it is. Ah. Ah. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. Knots. <gasps> a pirate? Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack. I got it. That's done. Good enough. Hooray! It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. Oh! Our treasure! It sunk into the sea. That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now, to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. Oh! Okay. I knew I could tie it. Now what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. I know it because I'd counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's going to notice right away that the red one's gone. I got to go find it. <laughs> I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing, sorry. 
And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you want to know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. Don't look at me that way. I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Chusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpus. Grandpus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then, a needle is placed on top of the record. And as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right. You don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. 
Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great! Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just Hat falls glass. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thud, and then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The mighty cream was working until there was a pop. And then the mighty giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. If you think you're screwing... The Eco Tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa, what is it? An Eco Tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. To grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look, this one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. Uh-huh. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. 
Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we uh, test these apples ourselves? Uh, Nolik, help me out. Uh, I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrate. Oh, apples. Mmm. <gasps> Elisa, don't eat that. Uh, oh. Elisa, 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 stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, oh, oh Lisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? This is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me! I poisoned someone! Yes! With an apple! Fire! I mean, poison! Oh! Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Ugh. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right, 
You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! <sighs> Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh. Got it! Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder, or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam, or powder, shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out, out the fire! fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you. You saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson Fidgeting and talking. What are you going to do with the red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See? No problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah. Then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look! The ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is. But of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. 
Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack a mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable. Except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super. You're better than a TV show. Oh, yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of... Carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butteress. And finally, beer the fumarissa. Chusaka. Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> Uh-oh. You said it. Uh-oh. You, Tom Thomas, are a big boy.
but your brain is smaller than Nullix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts. The battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it, but the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. <laughs> Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> the compass. Pipe ball, hands on the deck. Ay, ay, ladies. Shiver me timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? with a map, and it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh, from here you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on, but where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles. 
the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. The key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kettle's back in action. TV! Oh, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm, then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius! You forgot the key! The key! Don't close the door! Simka, you must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. To open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, there isn't any code to memorize. Because the code is held inside the card's memory. And the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. A 
Lisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag, then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor da Eugenius, dee dee the water's boiling. Fantastic. Ta -da -ta 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 -ta. Ch -ch -ch Wait a second. Ah, oh no. I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, oh, I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. Hey, what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh, ah! Ugh. Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, uh, then who were you talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? Where? What? Uh, uh. What was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, uh, that, it's a uh, telekinesis. Uh. It's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> was that done with your mind too? The door, yeah, sure. You are a genius. Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Vixies. He always helps the Vixies, and the Vixies are happy to help him too. Professor Eugenius let the Vixies set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Vixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested. From computers, phones, and furniture, to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us pixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? how? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked and... Tidish. Very clever. That's a real tidish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. The thermos. Where should I put it? Put what, Tom Thomas? Oh, it's you. Uh, my ice cream. Are you joking? Eat it! I can't. Tom Thomas, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's just that it's a present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad going to give her? I don't know. But when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if Mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where. Inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freezer or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? 
Here's a thermos. But what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you, Nolik? I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's already stuck. What did you say? It's already stuck. Already stuck? Uh-huh. Try to unstick it. Well, is it working? Yeah. And what if you breathe onto the foil? <sighs> yeah. Hang on, Nolik. I'll go and get Tom Thomas. <sighs> Winter is a wonderful time of year. Holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. That's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Tom Thomas! No, its tongue got stuck. Where? In the thermos. Hurry, I'll explain everything later. Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos. How wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. Nolik, you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. SMS. Clear. Oh, take a look. A mobile phone. You think they bought Tom Thomas a new one? Oh, wow. Nolan, stop. Awesome. Uh, turn around. Oh. Tom Thomas, help us, please. We're trying to save your telephone. That's not mine. Oh. Katya left it behind. Katya! Katya! She's gone. It's too late. Oh, an SMS just came in. You won't read it, will you? Of course not. 
But what if it's something important? Tom Thomas, don't you even dare go and read her letters. Uh-huh, pretty interesting. Looky, there's just a ton of these messages. Now, Nolik, you go and distract him from the telephone. Uh-huh. Chisaka, hey! It's me, your buddy Nolik! That's enough with the barking. Out of this room, right now. Done. Well, power is off now. Huh, what's up? It stopped working all of a sudden. Oh. It looks like you've broken it. What? No way. You did too. Well, Tom Thomas, now you have to give Katya your phone back like this. I just don't get it. It happened because you were reading someone else's mail. It was just an SMS. An SMS is no different from a letter. It's only shorter. People send SMSs through their mobile phones. And that's why looking inside someone else's phone and reading their SMSs is just as rude as reading someone else's mail. And that's why when we fixies work inside of a phone, we always put our headphones on when a call comes in. So we won't overhear people's private conversations by accident. It's just the polite thing to do. I promise I won't read anyone else's messages. But that's not gonna make the mobile work again. Now what? Tell them the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Tom Thomas, cause we turned the phone off. And now we'll turn it back on. See that? The contact's barely attached. We just need to write a note to the Fixies who work over at Katya's. I'm sure they'll fix it. There are fixies living in every home, and the work they have to do can seem endless. The TV starts acting up, then the doorbell breaks, the washing machine stops running, and then the phone won't ring. And besides all of that, there is cleaning and there's oiling. Like the appliances in the kitchen or kids' toys and all those other things. Modern houses are literally stuffed with all sorts of devices. And that is why the fixies keep working day in and day out. Unfortunately, this can make fixies get carried away by their jobs. And they can forget about their fixie relatives and close friends that live in the neighboring houses and apartments. And that's not right. Just like humans, fixies have to remember to go and visit each other more often and write each other letters, or at least send their regards. That's all. It's working again. You're the best. Now I can give a call to Katya and tell her she left her phone over here. Tom Thomas! Is that you calling? Yeah. And to who? Katya. And her phone is where? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, good catch. Boy, you're fast. Just like a, like a... Like a fixie. The scale. Chusaka, that's enough already. But what if it's something important? Come on, she's just a dog. They say that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. <laughs> Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh, how could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. 
Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh, I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's the scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? If we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scale's pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka. Right, like she's gonna come running. How are you gonna get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I wear. This may be little, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. Her weight is two kilograms. Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh, no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. Stop! What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm, all right. So, that sixth sense, you still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way! How could she know it would ring? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? Chess. Hmm, how about that? <laughs> then I'll play my pawn. And I'll play my pawn. <laughs> We need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? 
Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look! I found it! Yeah. Uh, hey! What's going on? <gasps> That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh, Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah! I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go! Class! So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're gonna knock over yours. Take that! Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. No, get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. Then how do they move? Only one square per move and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Uh -huh. Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, it. Forward. Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward. Uh -huh. Next, I'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pawn, and once more, go forward. Gra Grampus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen, get back here. In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor! We found the missing pawn for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. Oh, you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius into checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. The chick. Professor Eugenius is making breakfast. Only the eggs will never get cooked at this temperature. What are you doing? 
You can't heat up these eggs to temperatures that are this hot. Why can't you? The chicks, you'll kill them. What chicks? Where? This appliance, do you even know what it is? I thought it was an egg cooker. You thought it was an egg cooker? Listen up. I do not want to see you around this thing. Not anywhere close. Got it? I won't get close to it. But, Grandpus, we don't even know what this is for. It's called an incubator. <laughs> to help her chicks hatch, a mother hen sits on her eggs for a long time, keeping them warm with the heat of her body. An incubator is a device for hatching chicks that is used in place of the mother hen. It's always nice and warm inside, just like under a chicken's wing, but not too hot. An incubator can even turn the eggs so they get just the right amount of heat all over. Chicks that are hatched in an incubator are no different from the chicks that are hatched without them. Fire! What? This thunderstorm is really scary. Let's be scared together. I'm not scared at all. Me neither. I was joking. Just joking with you. What do you think? Are the chicks scared in there? Holy moly! Wow! That was a big one. Even the electricity got turned off. Ah, uh, the incubator turned off too. And the temperature is dropping. And for little chicks, is that bad? I'm sure it is. It's cold in here. These chicks need help, and Grandpa's isn't around. Then we're gonna have to save these chicks without him. Nolik, get the door open. Help me. I can't. Grandpa said I can't get near the incubator, so try opening it yourself. I can't do it. And I can't help you. But the chicks are going to die of cold. Ugh, let's just do it. But don't you go and tattle to Grandpoose. I promise. Ah. Hooray! It's a bit early for hooray. Yeah, we'll warm up the chicks with the fire. Class! Time for hooray? Now? Yeah! Tadish! Like sparrows, ducks, storks, and ostriches, all birds lay eggs and sit on them to help them hatch. And it's not only birds. Other animals like snakes, crocodiles, and even turtles have babies that they hatch from eggs. To protect their children, they try to hide their eggs, like deep in the bushes, in the cracks of rocks, or in the sand. By the way, roe is also little eggs, just without the shells. From this fish roe, little hatchlings are born that will grow into big fish. And from tiny frog roe, tadpoles hatch that will then develop into full-grown adult frogs. And you've heard of dinosaurs, right? Well, those giant reptiles that lived millions of years ago, they also hatched out of eggs. What happened to the electricity in here? It's a blackout from the thunderstorm, I guess. This is just awful. <gasps> My incubator. <gasps> Someone lit a candle and the temperature is normal. So who put the candle in there? Tell us right now. Nolik, don't be a tattletale. It was me. By yourself. By myself? Of course yourself. I wasn't allowed near it. Well, yeah, he wasn't allowed near it. All by yourself. Then well done. You saved the chicks. Our hero. So, Fire, follow his example. And you, Nolik, accept our heartfelt thanks. Look inside. <laughs> They're starting to hatch. All right, Fire. Come take a look. Now I'm allowing you. Look! A little chick. It's so cute! And so yellow. Look at him. What a little sweetie. Fire. What? Well, I really know who saved him. The 
dip in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Hands on deck! There's a giant octopus, Starbird! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Uh. Did it break? Nope, it's all Tadish. It's not close to Tadish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lake! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh. That's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lake! You gotta get out! You'll get sick from that stinky air! I can't get loose. I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. Achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik! I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik! Where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there.
Do you know who I am? A giant octopus? The Drain. Hey, Nolik, come help me. The fan in the computer needs dusting. Not right now. Me and Tom Thomas are painting a card for his parents' anniversary. Oh, look, poor you. You must be so tired. Hi, Simka. It's really great you're here. I have a question. Twelfth anniversary, is it spelled with an F or is it with a V? Uh, you know what? First put down the number 12, and then put a dash on there, and then a TH. Oh, right. But first I'll change the water. I'll be right back. Oh, Mama left her ring here. Whoa! Uh, no, uh, uh, no! Oh, no, what have I done? Uh, I spoiled my mom and dad's... Uh, Special day. Where? In the bathroom? My mom's ring was lying there, and, and I dropped it into the sink, and now it's washed away. Uh, there goes the day. It didn't wash anywhere. Don't you know anything about how a drain trap works? About a what? A drain trap's a special curved pipe under the sink basin. <laughs> Water flows out of the faucet and flows down into the drain trap. And after that, it goes down to the sewer. But when you turn off the water, not all of it washes away. Some of it stays down in the drain trap. It's made that way so the smell from the sewer won't get back into the house. A ring is much heavier than water, so if you happen to drop it down the drain, it won't wash away. It will stay at the bottom of the drain trap. Well, that means we still got a chance. Yeah, but how in the world can we get it out of that trap? Who knows? I don't know how to swim. Don't worry. It's all under control. Do you have any thread? Plenty of it. Go get it, and I'll be back in a flash. Hmm. I can't fix it like this. I need my welder. Papoose! I need to borrow your pack a mat for a little while. Now that's a coincidence. I need to use it, too. Masia, then I need to use your pack mat What? I'll bring it right back. Hey, where are you going? Just watch what you're doing, dear. Just like the name says, Fixies live to help machines and appliances. But machines are very big and Fixies are very small, so they can't get by without tools. Long ago, Fixies worked with just about anything they could find. Little feathers, threads, pins, but now they have backpacks called Hackamats. Inside of Hackamat are all sorts of tools. Just push the button and the Packamat spins around quickly shooting out a hook or a magnet or even a parachute. Every adult fixie has their own Packamat. But before children can get them, they have to go to school and study hard and then pass an exam before they have the rights of a full-fledged fixie. And it's only after all of that that young fixies get their own Packamats. And what? You're going down there with just that on? Not just like this. <laughs> yeah, like that. Huh? She was just saying, when I tug on the thread, you need to pull me up. I got it. He just said, I got it. She said, she doesn't need me to repeat what you say. what fixies are for. Tom Thomas, who are you talking with in there? Oh, your mom came back. No one. Hey, can you turn back into fixies? I gotta ask you a question. 
I forgot. Should I write 12th anniversary with an F, or do I write with a V? Just write the number! You're right! The lie detector. Suka! Shh, quiet. I'm on a stake out here. Who are you staking out? Huh? Tom Thomas. We've got a bet that he won't be able to survive three days without any TV. Really? Can I be on the stakeout with you? Shh. Simka! Ha! Aha! I gotcha! What? Who? You lost the bet, Tom Thomas. Just tell me you didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you? It's because I... Mm, I'm not Tom Thomas. What? I'm Tom's brother. That's totally not true. We know Tom Thomas doesn't have a brother. I meant his first cousin. Then how come you two look so much alike? It's because our mothers are twins. So what should we call you? Who, me? Uh, John Johnson. And who are you, by the way? As if you don't know who we are. This room is beautiful. Sure is bigger than mine. I don't believe you. You're telling a lie. And what is your proof? Maybe he's not lying. There's a way to check it. How? Yeah, how? With a lie detector. You'll see. <laughs> a lie detector is a device that is used to help figure out if someone is telling the truth or if they are lying. You see, when someone is lying, they always get a little bit nervous. Even though we might not see it, we know that a liar's heart beats a little faster, his breathing changes, and he sweats. A lie detector can pick up on all of these little things. And that's how a lie detector can be used to help find the truth. But you don't have a lie detector. But we know how a lie detector works, don't we? Or are you scared? Tom Thomas. What's that for? To listen to your pulse. How come? So I'll be able to check how fast your heart is beating. And Nolik? He's gonna keep an eye on how often you blink. And what are you doing with the egg? The egg is an old African method. If you're not telling the truth, your hand will automatically squeeze the egg. And so, the egg will crack. Well, my egg won't crack. We'll see about that. Humans have tried to come up with all sorts of ways to find out the truth. For instance, in ancient China, they would put some dry rice in a person's mouth when they told him the crime they believed he committed. Then, they checked the rice. If the rice stayed dry, they believed he had committed the crime. In ancient India, a person had to bang on a gong while answering a judge's questions. If he started banging the gong louder, then it was believed that he was trying to hide the truth. And in Europe, if one knight accused another of lying, then they would just take part in a duel. Whoever won that one was said to be on the side of truth. No, it's not easy to hide the truth. But sometimes it can be even harder to find it. Answer yes or no. You got that? Do you have two ears? Don't you have eyes? Just yes or no. Yes. Answer, are you a girl? Hey, come on. Yes or no? No. Where do you find such dumb questions? We just have to check what happens to your heart when you tell the truth to us. All right, now answer this. Do you know the Fixies? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. I forgot. His pulse is speeding up. Are you Tom Thomas? No. Ah, uh, his pulse is racing. And his eyes have started blinking. And the Fixies, tell us where you learned about them. From Tom Thomas. He couldn't have told you about us. It's a secret. He could. Not true. It's true. It's not true. Yes, it is. Look! The egg cracked! Just give up, John Johnson. All right. I'm Tom Thomas, guys. Tish!
Is it really possible to know if you lied just by measuring your pulse? With pulse, you really can. But you probably couldn't with the egg. You tricked me then. That wasn't nice. You weren't tricked. John Johnson was. Huh. You know what? I think you've got to get checked out on this lie detector. Ha! I don't think so. You need to get ready to give me my wish. Because you're the one that lost the bet. The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. Piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer. The gum froze up, and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh? Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Marcia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. <laughs> Hooray! Tom Thomas! Simka! Open up the door! It looks like I'm gonna freeze up in here for good. Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all, so they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works.
stairs. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here. Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away. Huh? Where? <laughs> ah! I don't want to go into the refrigerator. Stop! I was joking. <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't going to chew it anymore. I'd never do that. Not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? The oven. Now, here he is, our death defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm hmm. I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, no, no! I'm falling! Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! I'm just joking. No, like, you're a knucklehead! Simka! <laughs> <laughs> Tula! We're down here! <laughs> <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all! <laughs> Need some help? We can manage this ourselves, right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming. Hi. Hi, Tom Thomas. Hi, Nolik. Are you up for a ride? Cause this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat, and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. Oh, it really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here. Yeah, inside of a fresh baked fixie cake. I don't want to. You think I do? You'll fall off. Ugh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. Do you want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We gotta find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. Today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Tom.
Thomas, I think you'll explode. Ow. But it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm. Uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? I hate cake. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend who's got a really good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> the camera. <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye-bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with this camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo paparazzis. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The story of the century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simka Nolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. 
We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one, and you're in it. I know for sure. Look! I'm zooming in. It's impossible. I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it. After every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or mm, not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No. Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm. And what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. 
Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In, in the, the refrigerator. refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. The electric train. Woo 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 woo! Suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> if help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play Choo Choo by yourself. And I will. Pew, 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 pew. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, you talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the break. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. 
But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer. When suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! The hairdryer. Nolik, are you here? Yep, I'm here. I got a cool trick to show you. What? Oh. That was real magic, dude. Too long to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, uh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use a hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa! Yeah! I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. Probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hair dryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hairdryer and lifting you up to Nolik. So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. They can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hairdryer. 
Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. to fly inside a stream of air. Good for you. Now I'll sound like a fixie. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> Watch me. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Just look. I'll breathe in one breath of helium. Isn't it bad for you? You can only breathe a little. Hey, hi there. Oh, Tom Thomas became a fixie. And that's my trick for you. Funny, huh? Oh, that's too funny. What a squeaky little voice you got there. <laughs> See, I'm already not a fixie. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> that's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs> the nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with the light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hop. Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? They're very close. I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. <gasps> Monsters! Hey, what do you think we are, hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. 
Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I gonna fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find night lights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a night light here. <laughs> How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your night light. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoose was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. The Vent. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas! Okay. Simka Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way. Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous. You are. Uh, uh, ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out but rises up and forms a hump. That's 
That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the fume gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> Okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> oh, I don't think this way's gonna work. Look, it's flying! Like it. The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tiddish! Thank you, Simka. What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder? Then here you go! A present for you! Oh, thanks! It's just great! And I want to give you this! Oh, gee! It's just splendid! Simka! Are you here? Huh, what you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> the vacuum. What's the point of cleaning up toys? You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it. If you're done cleaning up, go and eat your lunch. Okay, be there soon. Nolik, you wait for me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. Please! Help! Help me! Help! Help! Please! It really is weird. How is it possible a vacuum cleaner can take all that dust in and none of it gets back out? Oh, come on. It's simple. They taught us about it way back in third grade of Fixie School. You can think of a vacuum cleaner as nothing more than a fan with a net. The fan spins backwards, so it sucks in air with dust and dirt. If you put a net in front of the fan, the net will catch everything that is in the air and let the air pass through. Then all you need to do is add a pipe and you've got yourself a vacuum cleaner. But instead of a net, vacuum cleaners use special bags to collect the dust and dirt. It's as simple as that. Oh, whoa, Simka. Uh, no, like, could he get sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? Uh, uh, Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I'm, I mean, for you. All right. I'll go clean the dishes. No lick. No lick. No lick. No lick. No lick. We better go and get help right away. 
get away. <laughs> Masya! Masya! Nola got sucked up inside the vacuum. It's impossible. He can't fit in here. No, not in this vacuum. Into the big one, the human. It's just terrible. Nolik, my Nolik, he could suffocate in there. Come on, quickly. Yuck. <coughs> this dust is just awful. And it's awfully bad for you, too. Dust is a tiny enemy. It's so small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it. He he ha choo! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now. Ha, 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 choo! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. Nolik! Nolik! Achoo! So what do you say, Tom Thomas? Achoo! What? I already apologized. <laughs> And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> the catapult. here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like, now push. <laughs> All right. Ugh. Yes! Right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly! Ha <laughs> ha! Right out the window! Right up to the moon! First fixin' onto the world, Nolik! Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir! Nolik, get out of the spoon now! I'll be the first fixie on the moon! Yeah! Nolik, enough 
enough of this. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. He's gonna fly into space. And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on. Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah. Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times, but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you, too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Habus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Shit. Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! Ah! <laughs> Whew! We're alive! Hooray! He flew all the way! Who flew away? To the moon? Nope, just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> the combination lock. Are you here? Stop your hiding. I'll still find you. Nolik, is that you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. You saw. Let me go again. I don't want to. You want me to play hide and seek when I got a brand new game to play with? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere in the room. I took it to school with me. For what reason? To show it off. Awesome game! Tom Thomas! Can I play your game? Uh-uh, because I'm not done playing with it yet. Now just try asking me to do some favor for you. Hmm, wait, was it a three or a four? Hmm, it could have been five. I forgot. What about? I forgot the combination. And now I can't even do my homework. Everything I need to finish is inside of there. I'm not climbing in to find out your homework. Don't even ask me. Tom Thomas, why do you look so upset? <sighs> the code for the lock. I don't remember it. Don't you worry. Ha! We'll open it. I know all about a code lock. A simple code lock is built with a few discs that have numbers on them. In the center of each disc is a hole with a notch. When all of the discs are turned so their notches line up in a straight row, the lock's pin can slide out freely. And to get the notches to line up, just turn the discs to the lock's code and the lock will open. It's that simple. It looks like we gotta take a look inside the lock. Ah, I see. No look. Where are you? There's work to do. I won't do it. I'm not gonna help such a greedy boy. Nolik, won't you help me out here? 
and I won't be so greedy anymore. All right, you broke me down. Only as soon as we're done, you're gonna let me play with the game. Right. There's no room in here. Hang in there. We'll start turning the discs one at a time, and you yell stop when they're lined up. Stop! Turn the next one now! Stop! Stop! Now try! Yes! Addy, you! Tiddish! Hooray! And your code was really simple. Way too simple. The secret numbers and letters that you use to lock something up are called the code or the password. And to make sure your password's a really good one, here are some things you should know. Never choose a password that's really simple for someone else to guess. Like one with numbers or letters that are all the same or are all in order. It's also a bad idea to make a password out of your birth date or name. It's better to think of a password that's a bit more complicated. And don't forget your password once you come up with it. Write down your password on a piece of paper and keep it in a safe place, but don't show it to anybody else. And then, if you happen to forget your code or password, you'll be able to remember it with the help of that piece of paper. And why did you ever put a lock on your backpack? I was hiding the game from the other kids. Then why did you take it to school today? I wanted to show it off to my class. And did you show it? No way. If they would have seen it, they'd be like, I want to use it. I want to play. And so you hid it and didn't show it to anybody? Not to anyone. Then why take it to school, silly? To show it off there. You're just some show off. You're just some greedy. Oops, sorry. Once greedy boy. Will you let us play now? <sighs> play away. We're not bothering you, are we? Can you jump a little easier? You're shaking the whole desk. The team. First period is almost over. Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka, pass it to me! Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, fire! My motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and 
And here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. Nulik, pass! Shoot! I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. Ah! Ah! Six nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know, speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. And here's what we're gonna do. We got it. Check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Like that. Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team. Team! The clocks. Go around. Left side. That's crazy. You'll crash. No, I won't. See, I told you. What? Huh? Nothing. Hmm. Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with the computer. Uh... Mm. Mm. This stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? how? She gotta know things like that. <laughs> Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks too. Oh, <laughs> wow, you did it! It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh huh. And now the clock will go slower. Fire! Now that clock over there. 
Let's go do it. That's it. We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool. Way to go! Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! Yay! I did every level! Oh, thanks! You're both just the Time Masters of the Universe! Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock. Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning! What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do. But everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done? Time masters of the universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay. We'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy to read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Tom Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha, <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. The tools. Hang on, there are these really cool things that I want to show you. Ah. Whoa! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> look how many things you got all at once. <laughs> Your dad's gonna be so angry when he sees what you did with all of his tools. I'm gonna put them all right back where they were. And where were they? Open the box and you'll see. It's neat. There's a special place in there for each one of the tools. <laughs> Try hammering in a nail or drilling a hole with your bare hand. Uh-huh. There's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh. Any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka, you're a real poet. <laughs> now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. Class! I also have a rhyming riddle for you. 
would bang the nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall. A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A screwdriver! A screwdriver. I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we'd better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like Fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it, just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on, and what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas. I'm in here. Hi there. Reading. Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tool's place is. <laughs> did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. <sighs> and you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he wants? He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Tadish. <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared! Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too. That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it. And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. 
They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh, write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? <laughs> Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. Ah. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look, is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the internet, 
but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it. Go away. You go away. You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, no, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see you run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. <laughs> now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la 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 Then she starts dancing. la 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 <laughs> These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. Do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daddy! The Music Box. When the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and <laughs> followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Suka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? 
Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes gonna come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. Like I told you, no more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting back. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? A coffee grinder? Mm. No. A hole puncher? <laughs> mm. Is it a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? There we go, that's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. <laughs> Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way, too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas, won't let that secret out. Shh. The internet. Well, maybe it's a... Uh... Don't think so. It's probably a... Uh... You call for me, children? What's the matter? Take a look. I've never seen anything like it. What in the world could it be? Hit. Maybe it's a bathroom scale? Or a clock with a digital display. Wait a sec. Are there instructions around here for this thing? I couldn't find them anywhere. That's a problem. Well, then let's try to figure it out. What are you trying to figure out up there? What a huge hockey puck. It's big enough for a monster. <laughs> and the name is so silly. T-Robot. <laughs> Why don't they just call it the troll butt? Or I got it, the troll boat. <laughs> Please, stop the racket. So what could this thing do, huh? I have no idea. We could 
try finding it on the internet. Where? Just run along, you two. We don't need any internets. We can handle this. Go on, go. Don't interrupt us. Sure, whatever you say. Come, Nolik. We'll find it out by ourselves. Yeah! Uh, how? So, you remember what it was called? Uh-huh. Uh, a troll boat. Nah. A troll bot. You're right. Hop to it. A robotic vacuum cleaner. You mean it vacuums by itself? It's a robot, so yeah. Class, there's just so much cool stuff in this computer. No, look, this information is not on this computer. It's on the internet. From your computer, you can send a letter to another computer. You can also download a song or a photo from another computer. That's all possible because most of the computers in the world are connected to one another as part of a huge web. And this World Wide Web is what we call the Internet. Thanks to the Internet, we can take a peek at just about anywhere in the world and find information we need about anything. It's an electronic vegetable slicer. No, it's a printer for round sheets of paper. There's no way. Grandpoos, we found out what they do with it. You're back again. You, you mustn't, mustn't interrupt, interrupt the adult. Just wait a second. Nolik, turn it on. Uh, turn what on? Don't you turn on anything. Ready, Ready set, jump. jump. What is that? It's a robotic vacuum cleaner. It runs itself. And where did you find the instructions for it? On the internet. Just ask and it tells you. You can really just ask and it tells you? Uh-huh. If you want, we can show you. We'd love to see it. Sure, why not? Yep. Whoa! Uh, uh, hmm, on the internet. Hey, 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 wait for me. What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? The answer's easy to get. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. It, it says, says it weighs five tons. tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. You send a letter to me. I send a letter to you. You send a letter to me. It's just so easy to do. We're writing letters now. The fun is sending to get. We're writing letters now to the internet. She stole the remote. 
Nolik? Where are you hiding, Nolik? Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack of mat What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great! But what is it? I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light-emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. No lick! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote! A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second! Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush! Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> Modeling clay. Okay, you're right. It really does, Nolik. Simka! Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down. 
Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk. The aquarium has a tube that's leaking. So go and play. I have to get a pack Oh, oh, oh. I wish you could play Ted. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack a mat. Uh huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's. Let's fix everything before Simka with your pack a mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. <laughs> so, where is that hook that fell down? <laughs> All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack a mat. But it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out and dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack a mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? It will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. Tadish! So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium. Hop on. Leaky too. Here, it's leaking at the joint. Yeah, this tube is gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat. Sure. And here's a souvenir. <sighs> they are all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. Ah, it's exploding! What in the world is happening here? Flooding water! You just do as I tell you, without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <laughs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey! That's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. The zipper. Hey, Nolan, look. Why did Tom Thomas go to sleep like that? Maybe it was some kind of homework for one of his classes. Uh-huh, gym class homework. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. 
You're looking good. My parents just bought it for me. Isn't it a cool jacket? And what? You slept in it all night? Yeah, once I tried it on, I didn't want to take it off, and I fell asleep in it. Yeah, life's never boring with you around. Oh, I think the zipper got stuck. And so what? You can leave your coat on no problem. You're about to go to school, right? And you think I could sit in my class like this? How could I have broken the zipper? Don't worry, you haven't broken it. Not yet. Here is a simple zipper. It is made with two rows of small teeth that pass through a slider. The slider has two holes on the top and only one hole on the bottom. When we pull the slider up along the zipper, the teeth grab onto each other and the two rows join together into one. And zip! The zipper is closed. To open it, all you need to do is pull the slider in the opposite direction. Then the teeth will come apart. But on mine, they're stuck together. And now what? What do people do in the morning? Do what they do. Exercise. And I'll have time to think it over. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and, and then what about me? Uh, go exercise, too. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simka, come on, think of something. I'm sweating already. Soon, okay? Go get washed up in the meantime. Whew. Do you think I could help you think? I think not. I think you'd be better off washing. How's it going, Tom Thomas? Didn't we think of anything yet? What? Didn't we think of anything yet? Ah, gotcha. Nope, she hasn't thought of anything so far. <sighs> it's so hot. Just pretend you're a polar scientist. They always work in their parkas. And you know what? I'll be the penguin. Hey, where are you going? Uh, I can't take it anymore. All right, just sit right here, and I'll try to find the problem. <laughs> you see? That polar scientist game's funny, huh? <laughs> That's not it. It's Simco. <laughs> She's tickling so hard. Stop squirming. And you stop tickling me. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's why it won't open all the way. It's only a piece of thread stuck in there. Pull the slider up. <laughs> Tiddish. You can unzip it now. <gasps> Thanks so much. Here it is, a thread. That's what the whole problem was. You're kidding. So I've been sweating because of some piece of nothing? In technology, every little thing matters. I remember when scientists built one of the first computers around 60 years ago. It was a giant machine. It filled up several rooms and had more than a million parts. It was a technological wonder. But all of a sudden, this technological wonder went kaboom and broke, and no one understood why. The computer just stopped working, and that was that. The scientists were going crazy. They couldn't find a problem. Turns out that this huge computer broke because a little butterfly had flown inside the computer and got stuck in between some contacts. Yes, it's true. This huge machine went crazy because of a little butterfly. And that's how it goes. So you see, every little thing really does matter. Tom Thomas, breakfast is ready. What are you doing in your jacket? It's cause I was playing polar scientist. Hmm. Simka, what took you so long to figure it out? I just, just thought it would be funny to see Tom Thomas do his exercises and brush his teeth in his coat, that's all. That was your plan? Well, yeah. Can I joke around a bit? <laughs> the laboratory. You've got 
to get to the school right away. What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six. Ooh, I like this hairstyle. Seven, eight. <gasps> oh, hi there. Hello, Verda. Oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive. But go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. <laughs> The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode. Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Masya, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Ah, oh, there! Oh, wee! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka and Nolik? There! They're all there! Oh, my children! Don't lose your head! Oh! Oh! Asya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. we need to save, not you. I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Nolik, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> Huh? Uh. Tideesh! Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But fire said... Why fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. The microphone. And what do you 
think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> Moo? <sighs> Fee! <sighs> hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Alia? What are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. No, Lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh, uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. <laughs> we try our best. Over. 
We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. The solar battery. Let's see. Three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise. We can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's gonna have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Simkanolik, just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tidish! With the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there, on the calculator. Oh, I got it. 
zero means no, no lick. <laughs> Good one. The alarm clock. Ha, it didn't ring again. No lick. Let's go fix the alarm clock. Simka, wake Tom Thomas up. Tom Thomas, get up! Tom Thomas! Hey, you'll be late for school. Tom Thomas, get up already! Uh, uh. This is really something. And where's the battery in here? No, this is an old mechanical alarm clock. It doesn't work with a battery. It uses a spring. How's that work? People wind up the spring tightly. And then as it slowly unwinds, it turns the gears, which turn the hands of the clock. Uh, 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 chew! Uh, oh! What? The alarm clock broke! Uh, Let's hurry and get you washed up! Tom Thomas, are you just getting up? Dad, the alarm clock didn't go off, it's broken! Here's the problem, it won't turn, because the feather's stuck in the gears. Nolik, help me! Uh, uh. Papa, what's going on? It looks like it's an earthquake. Huh, it really is broken. Bad time to throw out this old piece of junk. Tom Thomas, I'm off to work. Don't be late for school. I won't. In the trash can. And what's going to happen to us? Well, you see, Nolik. People throw out broken things without a second thought. Even appliances that can still be fixed end up in the trash all the time. And the trash is taken to a horrible, deadly place called the dump. If a fixie happens to be inside a broken appliance, he will come face to face with great danger. Once, my uncle got thrown into the dump buried inside an old TV. He barely managed to jump out of the bulldozer's path, and it was a miracle he didn't end up in the incinerator. After that, he just roamed around the huge dump, trying to fix anything. He became totally crazed. <sighs> Good thing the Fixie Rescue Squad managed to find him and bring him back home. I don't want to scare you, but we might be taken to the dump, my boy. Papa, I'm scared. Huh. Where is the alarm clock? Maybe my dad took it to get fixed. <gasps> but Nolik and Papus are in there. Now just a little bit further. I don't want to go to the dump. No tears. There's only one way out of here. We need to fix the clock and make it ring. But how? Inside the clock, there is the main spring, and there's also a second spring. The second spring is held still by a brake, and so it waits. When the little hand reaches the time the alarm was set to go off, the spring jumps off the brake, and the gears are free to start turning. That makes a little hammer beat the cup of a bell very, very quickly. And that's how an alarm clock rings. Hmm, so this feather is stopping the gears and not letting the hammer strike the bell. Exactly. I'll start rocking the gear back and forth and you tug it. And one. And two. Simka, I think I can hear my alarm ringing. Run to the sound, quickly! Uh-huh, someone turned the alarm off. Whoa, and here comes that earthquake again. Nolik, Nolik, I'm here. Nolik, we fixed the alarm clock. So what was wrong with it? A feather got jammed in the gears. And how could a feather get in a clock? 
Oh, it's probably from when I put the alarm clock under my pillow, so it wouldn't wake me up. Huh, so you mean because somebody doesn't like to get up in the morning, we almost ended up at the dump? By the way, if that somebody doesn't hurry off to his school soon, he'll be late. Oh, you're right, huh? The balloon. No way, you'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents gonna do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka gonna do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude! Spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers! Hooray! Tadish! Tadish! All right. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay. By the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. 
There's no way, Nolik. We would need to use the burner. And kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf. So climb in and let's do it. I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. <laughs> huh. What's so funny, huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> All right, and take that. <laughs> You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Class! Tom Thomas, we need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. <laughs> it's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka! You look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Let them out, Wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick, don't be upset. The wolf is huge and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see, now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. All the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, wolf, I've got you. 
strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> your favorite. Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> the thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm gonna pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? <laughs> mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. <sighs> and never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. 
what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Pabu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? The Stain. <laughs> What's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf-portrait, it's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like the superhero I see here on this paper? How can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas, your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it. What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea. We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah. That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? Uh, any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is, cheerful and kind, ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. She believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula will believe anything you tell her, which is really great because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> 
Well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt, and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid. <laughs> that looks great. And how about down there? Wow. It's like fireworks. <laughs> Splendid. There's a name for this style of painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, my little artist. The Pack-A-Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the Pack-A-Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pack -a, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Ah, uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. <sighs> Grandpus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <laughs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how... I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. 
Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need Just be careful how you use it Or your finger, you could lose it A drill is such a great tool indeed And if it's not a drill, right! Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws and pliers All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed that's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack of mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. The Draftsman. Phew! Ha! Huh? What? Hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you drawing? I'm not drawing. This is called drafting. What's the difference? Tell me, is that a circle? Sure is. And that? It's a circle, too. Only, it's a rounder one. Of course. That's because I drafted it with a compass. And now I've got a real target. So now I'll load my dart gun. Oh, whoa! Why'd you shoot that thing at me? It was the gun. I didn't even pull the trigger. What? Did it break? Hmm. Let's open it up and see. There. This little part broke. Let me go find Papus. He can help you. He can make another one. A brand new one. <laughs> Wait. I can draft a technical drawing. Will Papus understand how to read one of those? Are you kidding? Papus is an expert at everything. Done. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're a real technical drawer. A draftsman, Nolik. That's what they call it. Try drawing a perfect circle by hand. Can't do it, huh? Well, with the help of a drafting compass, your circle will turn out great. Just put the needle point in the center and turn the compass, and it's done. A compass is only one of the many different tools for drafting. For example, if you need to draw a straight line, use a ruler. And if you need to draft a frame for your picture, you can use a triangle. First draft one side, and then the other. And then to finish your frame, just turn the triangle upside down and draft the two remaining sides. You'll get a perfectly squared frame. There are also drafting instruments for making curved lines. They are called irregular curves, or French curves. But actually, now people use computers more and more for drafting technical drawings. Papus! Huh? Ooh. Ooh. What? What happened? We really need your help. One of the parts broke in Tom Thomas's dart gun. Could you make it? What kind of part exactly? Look, here's a technical drawing. So, you even got a technical drawing. Very good, then. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Here you go. Super. Let's see. Hmm, it's not going to work. You see, it sticks out here on the side. I need to draft another technical drawing. Papus! Huh? Ah! <laughs> Nolik, you scared me again. Forgive me, but the part has to stick out over on this side. <sighs> Uh, and you're sure that's all? That's all, for real. Tom Thomas, it's done. <sighs> Listen, while you were gone, I realized that the part needs to have a hole right here. Papus? <laughs> 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 
Again? Uh, sorry about this, but there's a hole in this thing, too. A technical drawing is a special kind of drawing. It has to precisely describe the thing that needs to be made. To do that, the drawing must be very accurately drafted and include all of the measurements. And that's not all. If the object is complex, it must be drafted from at least three sides, including the front, the side, and the top. You see? The object looks different from every side. So if you don't want to work over and over again, learn to draft correctly. And boom. It works. Bullseye, and all thanks to our technical drawings. <laughs> yeah, after three tries, right? Some draftsman you are. <laughs> now I can draft all sorts of technical drawings. Even one of you, if you'd like. Uh, no, don't bother. Hey, Great. that tickles. Now do me a favor and turn. <laughs> hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. Just stop. What's going on? Now I think I got it. It's done. And what's that circle for, huh? That's the top view. You know what, Simka? That's what you really look like from up here. Nolik, take this over to Papus. He can use it to make another Simka. No thanks, Tom Thomas. For me, one Simka's enough. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik. That's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know 
know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! The magic wand. Oh, Tom Thomas, how did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden wish, Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden wish, Tadish! Hmm. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! Ah, ah! Oh! Ah! Hey, Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly! Ah! Ah! Shame on you for attacking helpless little kids! Wait, I'll make you bigger now. Golden wish, Tadish! Ah. What? You scared? So you're only brave enough to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge! I'm as huge as Tom Thomas! I'm huge! Oh! No, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Ugh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. 
And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. <gasps> no! Why are you screaming? I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful! That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. <laughs> Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the motion sensor. <laughs> this part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way, you can keep on working. All right, then. Only remember the code for the part. A-8375. I'll remember it for sure. <laughs> Why is Lisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Huh? Ah, Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened? Ah, and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. <gasps> this door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. 
sensors are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. Titties! <laughs> Professor Eugenius, mission accomplished. Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. Uh-huh. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ah, uh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. All right, we'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor! Stop! You don't! The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a pac mat and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masi and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below. And each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh, not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give him a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts.
It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Marcia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Marcia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is... It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. <laughs> the chain reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Chain reaction. 
What do you mean, Nolik? Tantanus was rude to you, then you were rude to Simka, then Simka was rude with me. So there it is, a chain reaction. Yeah, and the rudeness was like a little spark. It just spread and spread and spread like a forest fire. Will you forgive me, Simka? Yeah, all right. I've got an idea. Why don't we try starting our very own chain reaction the other way around? What do you mean? Well, instead of spreading angry and rude feelings, we could spread happiness. But how? It's simple. All we need to do is smile and say nice things to each other. What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood. And I know how. Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring him in. <laughs> and now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! Totally awesome! I can't believe what I saw! How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction! What? A chain reaction! No licks, Q. Whoop! <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? The Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. Ha! <laughs> That's nothing! Hey, Tom Thomas! How long have you been messing around with this cube already? It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Hey, Nolik, looks like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. Now I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What, you can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great. I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? 
What? This side's got to be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simco is telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Sim could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, Lick, you better hurry, because Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this. We did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, no, Lick, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao. Woohoo! Wow, you really solved it. It was no, Lick. No, Lick, you are cool. So how? You see. First, you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all back huh? together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now... It's a Nolix cube, right? The dog. <gasps> it's about me. Pixies? It's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. Mm. Uh, choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good dog, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? Whoa, whoa. Come on out. I see you. <laughs> no, jump down. <laughs> oh, no. We're trapped in here. Alert. Something's burning over there. Why won't they listen? I think she's going to eat us. Together with the box. <laughs> We're done for. Oh, come on, look! <gasps> the outlet is sparking! Oh, no! Something 
must have broken in there. Are we going to fix it? Kids should never touch outlets, and you know it, too. It's forbidden. Then how do we fix it? Go find Papus, and I'll stay here and wait for you. Uh, but where's Papus? <laughs> I know where he is. <laughs> I don't know what she's barking about, but I think Chusaka wants to help us. Then come on, Chusaka, help us. Woo! <laughs> He's in there. <laughs> Papus, Papus. Nolan, is that you? Uh -huh. There's an outlet sparking over there, and it smells like it's burning. Are you sure? Yeah, Chusaka found it. Really? Great job! <laughs> there are many kinds of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs. Like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> That's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. <laughs> uh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. <laughs> what do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Add a girl, Chusaka. Well done. Hetsu. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Finally, they understand me. The Fixie Phone. Tom Thomas. Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. Uh, a race car. No, not that. Chocolate. Uh, a pair of socks? Ha! Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! Ah, you got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papus. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. Nolik, don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. See that? So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixies' favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as fixie phones. 
That's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super! Oh, it'd be great to have my own fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. Uh, he gets so upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. <laughs> It's a... Surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papus is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the Fixie's numbers from it. But how can I call you up, then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. The Talking Doll. Mama. Well, then, now you know what you need to do to fix it. <laughs> Professor. Professor. Our lesson is over. <sighs> I'm sorry to be a bother. No problem, Professor Eugenius. Our lesson's over. I've got an urgent matter. You see? Mama, what is that? You've got yourself a talking doll. Yes, only she speaks Japanese. The problem is I've been asked to get her to talk in English. We can teach her. It's a new technology. I'm puzzled. Don't you worry. We'll figure it out, Professor. Thank you, my colleague. You're always there when I need it. What would I do without you? Professor. Can you tell us how toys talk? Not now, children. We'll learn about the doll tomorrow. Now it's time to go home. I already know everything about that doll. You do? Changing her voice is so easy that anyone can do it. How? Here, come, I'll show you. talking dolls used to work with a noisemaker inside. When the doll was turned over, air inside the noisemaker got pushed through a squeaker at the end of it, making a noise that sounded like the word mama. Mama. Heh, <laughs> funny. Today, the noises are recorded onto an electronic chip that's part of a little player inside of the doll. Just press a button and the sounds start playing. So now dolls can say much more than just mommy or daddy. They can say anything at all.
Well, here's the chip. This is where the recording of the doll's voice is. That's awesome. Can you re-record the voice on there? Well, yeah. Okay, I gotta go. Uh, uh. See ya. Wait, Nolik, I thought of a really funny joke to pull. What if we saw them and then we thought it was a thing? Uh-huh. Well, now, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to tell you all about talking dolls. Some start talking when you rock them, while others react to noise. And for this little lady, you need to press a button to get her to talk. Who wants to? Dula. Me? Well, okay. I can do it. Go ahead. And you'll hear her say, Hi there, Mama. <laughs> but in Japanese for now. Tula! Is that Japanese for hi there? Tula! Why are you hiding a picture of Digit in an alpaca mat? <laughs> How could she ever know that? Maybe you're in love? That doll is alive! They call that joking. I just thought of a better joke that we can play. Yeah. What? Tula, don't cry. She's not alive. She is alive. I'll tell you who did this horrible thing. It was Fire and Nolan. Huh? It's true, but now the joke will be on them. How? It's easy. All we gotta do is go. The smartest Fixie in our class is Digit. Sometimes I think that he knows everything about everything. Professor Grandpus has a lot of respect for him. Digit's always in thought whenever you see him, and he doesn't like when anyone distracts him. He just has no time for fooling around with the other boys. Digit prefers to solve problems using his brains and not his muscles. That's why he can have a tough time in gym class. But he's so sweet that it makes you want to help him. To tell you the truth, Digit isn't always great fixing things with his own hands. But no one understands technology better than he does. If something breaks, Digit can always figure out exactly what's wrong with it and the very best way to fix it. We're gonna make it even funnier this time. Uh-huh. You came back? What? You Mossy troublemakers. Now I'll show you what happens to bad boys who hurt. You got scared. <laughs> Who's crying now, huh? They probably thought that the doll came to life. You know what, Digit? I just started thinking that it, it might be better if she were alive. You know, Tula, you sure are hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> the Manipulator. Well? What do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Uh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? 
am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. Whoa! Ah! Who's here? Achoo! Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh, dear. What's going on? Ah! Stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... Ah! Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Uh, uh, achoo! Ah! 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 No, Nolik? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa! Elisa! Professor Eugenius, I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop, stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? The doorbell. Nolik! Nolik, what are you doing here? Just whistling a tune. Are you gonna whistle that tune the whole time Tom Thomas is away? He just left with his parents for a week. And we've got guests coming, remember? What guests? I invited everybody. The class? Yes, class. Uh, are they sleeping in there what, huh? First they invite us, and now they don't want to let us in? I'll share the present with you, then. <laughs> uh, fire. Maybe you'll get it to work now. When they get here, they'll ring the bell. How come? Why don't they just do what they always do and climb through the keyhole? No way. It's not that simple, Nolik. Today they're our guests. Ah. The guests ring the bell, and the hosts let them in the house. Ugh. It doesn't ring. You think the doorbell's broken? I say we go fix it. Before we fix anything, we need to know what went wrong with it. First we'll fix it, and then we'll know what it was. Back in the olden days, people would hang a bell over their doors with a string, and guests would tug on it to make it ring. Today, doorbells are electric, and they make all sorts of different sounds. Some buzz, some ring, and some even chirp like birds. The sound comes from a box inside the house called a chime. To make the chime ring, you push a button that's located outside. 
the button works just like a light switch. But instead of turning on light, it turns on sound. Verda, will you join me? Whoop. I gotta think about this. Yeah. Simka! You think your guests are gonna come at all? Hmm? Simka! Tula? Hey! The doorbell doesn't work! It must be broken! That's odd. We heard it ring this morning. Nolik, let's go! First, we'll examine the contacts. Yep, good and tight. Okay, let's check the speaker. <laughs> huh, the speaker's fine. Maybe the electronics are the problem. And what if we disconnect these wires and switch them? What'll that do? We'll know soon enough. You know what? Why don't we connect the wires straight together? Isn't that dangerous? We'll find out. Don't worry, nothing happened yet. Fire. He's the engine of our class. He's the fastest, the nimblest, and the bravest. Fire never sits still for a second, and he's always looking for adventure. New ideas just burn in his head. And that's why his name is Fire. But not all of his ideas are very good, so he's constantly getting bumps and bruises. He just can't help getting carried away. If he's burning with an idea, he can even forget about his classes at school. Grampus punishes him for that. But it doesn't seem to bother Fire, because some new plan will pop into his head the very next second. To be honest, Fire's my favorite out of all the boys in our class. It's sure never boring when he's around. Hey, you down there. I figured out why it's not working. So what's the reason? There's no electricity in the whole house. So that's why the bell isn't working. Uh, 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 uh. And what? We can't visit like real guests do until the electricity comes back? And when will it work again? Don't know. It could possibly take hours, guys. Uh, oh! It's working again! Ah! Enough ringing! Hey, Fire, quit fooling around! He's not fooling around! It's not me, see? Then who's ringing it? I don't know. Well, I know. The doorbell's ringing because Fire connected the wires together. True, but I'll fix that right now. Ha! <laughs> Your guests sure are noisy. Yeah. Thank goodness the humans aren't home right now. Hello? Hello there, dear guests. Let yourself into our home through the keyhole. So, should we go in? Go where? Go inside. Nah, that's not how guests act. So what do we do? Real guests always ring the bell. Okay, hold me tight. <laughs> the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tom Thomas, aren't you done yet? Yeah, show us your surprise and quit drawing. But this is the surprise. So, make yourselves comfortable. Quiet on the set and action. Put a huge bump on his head. It's just like a cartoon that you drew him there. <laughs> he did draw us a real cartoon there. Oh, right. Real cartoons, they only show them on television. But they make them exactly the same way. <laughs> Animation is made with many, many pictures called frames. Each one of the frames is a little bit different from the one that comes right before it. For example, a character can lift his arm up a little bit at a time. And then, if you watch the frames very quickly, one right after the other, it looks like the character is really moving. And that's how cartoons are made. And you know what? To make one minute of a cartoon, you might have to draw more than a thousand frames. Oh, wow. I'm not patient enough for that. 
It's no big deal that your cartoon's short. Especially since it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Tom Thomas, who's this kooky guy you drew here? You're just joking, Nolik. You don't recognize yourself? So this is supposed to be me on here? Did you already forget what happened to you this morning? Simka, you're it. You can't catch me. <sighs> I'm too fast for you. Uh, oh, ay 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 ay. <laughs> you weren't too fast for the pole. Ah, uh, Simka, you didn't have to tell him about that. Real sisters don't treat their brothers like that. Oof. And your cartoon's not funny at all. No, Lick. Don't go. It's okay. He just needs to sulk for a while. While he's gone, there's something I want to show you. Do you have a cartoon you can put on the TV? I have plenty. What should I do? Let's watch it again. But now I want to show you the same cartoon a frame at a time. Here, take a look. This is a frame. And here's another and another. Isn't that cool? Uh-huh. So cool. And then back at regular speed, there's 25 frames every second. What should I do? It's magical. Simka, you know, I feel awful for Nolik. Yeah, I feel awful too. There are many different ways of making animation. Hand-drawn animation is, of course, drawn by hand. And stop-motion is made like this. The animators pose the model and take a picture of it. Then they move the model a little bit and take another picture. And they do it again and again and again until there are enough frames to make the characters look like they're moving very smoothly across the screen. Another popular style of animation is clay animation. In these films, everything is built and rebuilt out of modeling clay. But today, most of the cartoons are made on a computer. At first, they make a computer model of a character, a sort of digital puppet. After the models are built, they are colored and animated to move. This is the kind of animation that's used in the Fixie cartoons. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Are you drawing a new cartoon? Nah, I started fixing the old one, so Nolik will stop being angry. Good, keep drawing, and I'll go and get him. Nolik! I'm not here! Nolik, forgive me. Please don't be so mad. There's a cartoon to watch. I've already seen your stupid cartoon. So what'd you do now? Put a huge bump on my head? Not a chance. I did it all over again. I'm sure you'll love it. You sure of that? All right, go ahead. Show me your cartoon. Quiet on the set and action. Now that cartoon I really liked. Good, because I'm all out of paper. Well, I think the first cartoon was funnier. <laughs> Whoa, but this one's much better, of course. Yeah. Mm -mm. The alarm. Hey there, I'm back. Yoo-hoo! Wait, my chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother. Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. 
And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> Uh-huh, and then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like, that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away, now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course, we need a security alarm. Need what? <sighs> The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open a door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixie's victory call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! And raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word. And it sounds funny. But we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure. Without a doubt. You're under arrest. Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? The electric kettle. Your chin was below the bar. Ooh, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way Fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the Fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A Fixie's entire life is connected with devices. 
Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the Fixies. So there you go. The Fixies help devices, and devices help the Fixies. Yes, we Fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're Fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How is it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you got to do is add hot water, and I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend, and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Ah, Simka! She was right over here. Ah. <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! Here. Nolik! There. Where is your other boot? It got lost. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry. I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas. We're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. So, today, we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there! And there! Some more over there, and there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out right now. All right. And a shower hose. That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out. Yikes. And a vacuum. 
vacuum cleaner's got one, too. Huh. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing. Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know, but that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grandpus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Ditch it! Go on, then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. <sighs> There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of mat. We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fix it just in time. Know it. Way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. Heh, <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddish! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik. Not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube. And some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. The wires. Ready for your lesson. Be quiet. Quiet down, please. Oh, it's so hot here. In today's class, we'll learn about... Uh... Whoa! What was that, huh? It must have been an earthquake. Yeah, it was an earthquake. Hooray! Eh, sorry there, Professor. Ooh, I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <laughs> Now then, where was I? All oh, right, today, oh, 
No, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. <sighs> Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Ah, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good, so just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Fixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves Fixies, helps us any time we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Over here! Uh, no, here. No, like, come help. Let's do this. Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, just one more time! Stop it! I can't get out! Loosen the wires! We need to pull out this one! Stop this nonsense, will ya? Thank you, Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there and then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The screen wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. I found another wire no one's using. Oh, uh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Molik, why are you so upset? Because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan, and his kettle, and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another, or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play. GPS. And three, four. Stop. Who goes next? I'm next. Five. One, two, three, three. And? Wait, I gotta choose a route. Should I go here or there? Choose already. 
No, like, what are you doing over there? Nothing at all. Just waiting at my place. Good. And don't get off it. Well, Fire? What was that? The alarm on my fixie tab. Oh, our lesson's about to start. Hurry! What about the game? Later! As soon as young Fixies enter their first year of Fixie school, everyone gets their own Fixie tab. It's a little computer that can do anything at all. Well, almost anything at all. Studying with a Fixie tab is fantastic. You can read it just like a book and write in it just like writing in a notebook. You can use a Fixie tab to listen to music, watch movies, find your way around, and talk, text, and send letters to your friends. And if you want, you can use a Fixie tab to go on to the internet that humans use, or you can visit the secret Fixie internet, where you can find news about the world of the Fixies. And Fixie tabs have games on them, too. Of course, these games can be a lot of fun, but you shouldn't play games until your homework is all done. Faster, or we'll be late! I know a shortcut we can use, this way. Now which way do we go? I need to remember the route. I think it's this way, or it could be that way. Well, which is it, this or that? Uh, I have no clue. Uh-huh. So what's our plan? We'll go back and start again. We flew in from there, right? No, I think it was there. That's not how we flew in. It was there. Ah, uh, I think we're lost in here. Uh-oh. No, like, stop the panicking. I only went, uh-oh, I'm not panicking yet. It's your fault, Fire. I know a shortcut. Go this way. How are we going to get out of here? How do I know? All I know is that we're late for our lesson. Thanks to someone. It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Now Grandpa's will punish us. What's going on? Well, I think I found a way to get out. Which way? Right here. I forgot that inside of my Fixie tab is a GPS navigator. Wes, uh, what's a navigator? A GPS navigator is an interactive electronic map that can help you find your way around. The navigator can figure out where you are by using signals that are sent to it from satellites. All you have to do is type the address of the place you want to go into it, and the GPS can figure out a route to get you there. And then it helps you as you go by telling you where and when you need to turn, so you can easily get to your destination. Let's see. Right now, we're here. And where do we need to go? <laughs> you know where to school. But where is that? Are you joking? In the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Can you be quiet? Where do you want to go? The laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Please wait while I chart out the route. Ha! It did it! <laughs> the navigator says to go there. Hey, what are you doing over there? Come on! And if you happen to go off route, the navigator will give you a different way to... Well, you finally made it. Unfortunately, you missed an important lesson today. We got lost. Forgive us. In case you're wondering, we were studying navigators. And you know what? We just used a navigator to get here. Yeah, it showed us the way we had to go. Well, that's certainly quite lucky for you, because now you don't get an F. But from now on, kids, you have to get here on time. I promise you that, because now we know where to get our shortcuts from. <laughs> Chusaka! 
Get away from here. So where did it go? Oh, here it is. Hey there, Tom Thomas. So what's on the disc? Hi there, Nolik. Hi there, Simka. It's a cartoon about Gulliver in the land of Lilypoop. My friend Jeannie let me borrow it. I have it till tomorrow. And what's the story about? Well, it's about this guy who gets shipwrecked where the people are just so teeny, teeny, tiny. Fixies, you mean? No, not fixies. Lilliputians. Lilliputians? Uh-huh. Know what, Simka? I think that you fixies might have come from those Lilliputians. No way! Our grandpa told us a completely different story of the fixies. <laughs> When something is very well made, then the saying goes that it was made with just a little bit of salt. In old times, craftsmen made things to last, and in each appliance, they would leave just a little piece of their soul. Those little pieces of their soul would turn into tiny craftsmen called fixies, who would then make the appliance their home and take care of it every day. And that's how the very first fixies came about. But as the years have passed, fewer things are being made by hand, and more and more things are getting made by machines in factories. That means there are less and less new fixies coming from human souls. Luckily, fixies can fall in love with each other and have their own family, raising their children and teaching them well, so they'll grow up to become skillful and honest master fixie repairmen. So you're mistaken. We're not Lilliputians at all. We're fixies. Yeah. Fixies! Listen, Tom Thomas, why don't you show us the movie? Yeah, yeah, I want to learn about Lilliputians, too! Really, I do! Sure, I'll show you. Oh, no! What's going on? I broke it, ugh! I can't give her back a disc that's messed up. Don't panic! We'll take a look at it. Come lay it down over here. Huh. Tom Thomas, why is this disc all covered in jelly? Because I was touching it with my fingers. I mean, uh, what else? It's obvious you don't know how a disc works at all. And you know how it works? Yeah, I know. Yeah? If we take a look at a digital disc through a powerful microscope, we can see rows of tiny valleys of different lengths. These valleys are actually a code for the cartoons, games, or music recorded onto the disc. Inside a disc player, a laser beam reads the code and helps turn it back into pictures and sounds. But if you scratch the disc or smudge the disc with dirty fingers, the laser can't read it and the disc won't play. That's why you need to keep discs clean and stored in cases. So that's why you should only hold discs along the edges. And when you're done watching them, you have to put them back inside their boxes. And what about this one? Do we have to get rid of it? Not so fast. Nolik, this calls for a major cleaning. Let's get the brooms. Thomas, check the disc. There you go. Now you're holding it right. Hooray! The disc works fine. Hooray! Now we can watch the movie about the Lilliputians. Hey, Gulliver, why are you sitting there? You've seen this movie already. I know in what. What, what? Look at that pile of discs. Where do you need to put them? Huh. In their boxes. The antenna. Wow, is this cool or what? Ah, uh, hello there, little fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. 
ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> Ready. If I could talk and now what? The if the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate, get hungry, and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Ah, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nola. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. Now, uh-huh. Here we go. Nolik, Simka, let's see if we can pick up signals from outer space. Right now, where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now. Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Digit, we all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Hmm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! This is sensational. It means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> the baby monitor. Oh. It's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check. Checking. One, two, three. Checking. It's working. 
<laughs> Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never gonna notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I gotta show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. Okay, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we got to think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great! Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hmm. You hit the button here. Look! Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong pixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult, and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in. Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Tidish? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Who? Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Uh-huh. Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me. That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. The Mixer. Marcia! 
Maria, why are we going to the dishwasher again? We have a busy day ahead of us, and we all need to be charged up with energy. I don't like charging myself up in the dishwasher. Then how about the microwave, Nolik? Or the kettle? No thanks! I don't like it when we go inside anything at all in that kitchen. There's not one interesting thing in there. And where's it interesting, huh? In the computer! Masia, will you let me get charged up in the computer? The energy there is sweeter. Our diet has to be nutritious, Nolik, not just delicious. People don't eat just candy, do they? Humans get energy from food, while the Fixies get their energy from appliances. Humans eat all sorts of foods, and so do Fixies. They need the energy that comes from different devices. Getting charged up in a car makes a Fixie faster. In a computer, smarter. And in a clock, more accurate. To get a balanced energy diet, Fixies mustn't stay inside of one place all the time like a television. It's healthier for us to move from one device to another. Good morning, Tom Thomas. <sighs> What's the matter? For breakfast, I got cereal with milk. Mom says that milk is so healthy, but I think it's just awful. Aha, uh -huh, Nolik, there you are. Go get charged right now. I'm not going. Look at Tom Thomas. He doesn't want to have breakfast either. Why don't you? Milk tastes awful to him. Tastes awful? He just doesn't know how to drink it right. Look what we've got here. What? What? A mixer. A mixer is a kitchen appliance that's used to mix together different foods. With a mixer, you can make things like frosting, sauces, or an omelet. But the most delicious thing you can make with a mixer is a milkshake. It's easy. Just put some fruit, syrup, juice, ice cream, or anything else you'd like into a container and then add milk. Now use the mixer to stir it all up until it's smooth and creamy. And that's it. You've got yourself a milkshake. Guys, what do we have for a milkshake? We've got a jar of jelly. Will it work? That'll work. And strawberry jam? That'll be great. Here's a banana. I found some chocolate, too. And I found strawberry ice cream. Start up the mixer. When you get up from your bed, yo. When you get up from your bed. Open your favorite cereal. Make one more shake, just one. They were good. Sure, if you want to. Oh, where did all the milk go? Way to go. Looks like you drank all of it. And I remember when you said how milk is awful. I didn't know how to drink it right. And what happened to Nolik? Shh. Just come, I'll show you. Nolik, 
Rick, here you are. Didn't you say that charging up in the kitchen is boring for you? The mixer's not boring. It gives you energy that's yummy, delicious, and nutritious. The Aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks so they can swim freely and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on and the filter is working. And the fish look so excited! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth! They must be so hungry! You're right! They're hungry! Nolik, come on! <laughs> I can't believe 
believe those fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. <laughs> the drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. Nolik, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm, so it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry, it's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Can you hear that? It stopped buzzing. It did. 
Hey, everybody, it's Nolik. Yo, what's up? So, our noisy ghost is back. I thought you were practicing at home now. Tom Thomas is drumming there. I had to run away. Well, our excursion is over. And now I would just be so happy to listen to your rock group. The globe. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh. Again, I couldn't do it. I told you, there's just no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <laughs> now you can't throw me off. Spin it! Go on. Whoa! What you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on! Come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball, but the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? <laughs> the planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the moon revolves around the Earth. Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Then why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me, and night for me over here. Ah, my side got dark again. And for me, it's a new day. All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> the Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. The Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there. While at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik. Nolik, where are you? I'm not sure. Somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it. You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it. Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you 
you were sure I was going to fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolan, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! Uh, you gotta help me! Don't leave me! Should we help him? I never would have thunk it, but the pull of chewing gum is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. Invisible ink. Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Uh, are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. Kay no, let's <clears throat> stop your teasing. Well, are you going to write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. <sighs> Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses or all the best or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through, to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you write, be polite. Go 
go on. Right. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. Mm. No lick. If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just zip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka, give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so. Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. To explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Whoa! No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem.
problem. A nice, simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec. I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably. Although... That's great. So let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. The Kaleidoscope. Tom Thomas, when are you going to give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look inside the collection. What for? I looked already. Come on! There's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Laughs, right? Uh-huh. It's great. I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh. Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me! With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid new Christmas suit. Oh, what's what? wrong? Ugh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah! Merry Christmas! Thanks so much. Now don't you feel good again? Yeah. It's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it! It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye In the kaleidoscope Shimmering scenes Gingerbread trees
everybody. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends? Or some ball hanging from a tree? The mirror. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Why has this mirror been standing here in the hallway for a whole week already? My dad can't seem to find any time to hang it on the wall. Are you sure it won't fall? It hasn't fallen so far. <laughs> so, Nolik, do I look like Spider-Man? <laughs> ah! No, you don't look like him at all. Yeah! Hey! You can't climb on walls like Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I can do it. Just give your chewing gum to me. See that? Like in the movie. Oh, like that's really hard. Just keep watching. That's hard. Feast your eyes and see what the only spider fixie in the whole wide world can do. could see their reflection was to look into water. The very first mirrors appeared about 5,000 years ago. They were made out of silver or bronze. Legend has it that the Greek scientist Archimedes once burned down an entire enemy fleet with the help of mirrors like these. But humans only became able to see their reflections well after they started making mirrors out of glass. And we still use glass mirrors today. But of course, mirrors are not only used for looking at our reflections. They are also used in telescopes to collect the light of distant stars. And humans also use mirrors inside of automobile headlights so they will shine even brighter. Just look at all the things mirrors can do for you. Whew. Looks like it didn't break. Help me lift it so we can lean it back up on the wall. <gasps> Tom Thomas! I've gotten a reflection in the mirror. That's impossible, because only vampires can't see their reflections. Or ghosts. But I'm not in there! So then, I guess you've become a ghost. <laughs> no, not a ghost! I don't like them! Hey, what's all the racket? Did you guys get yourself into trouble again? Suka! Me and Tom Thomas were playing Spider-Man, and I I turned into a ghost for some reason. Yeah, ghost. <laughs> That's silly. They don't even exist. Oh, you don't have any reflection either. Simka, you're a ghost just like I am. <gasps> That's just goofy. Look, just look, here I am. Well, hi there. But why couldn't I see myself over here? It's probably because the mirror is scratched on the back. Tom Thomas, do you think you can rotate the mirror? It's just like I said. Some of the special coating got scraped off of the back. A mirror is not just a piece of plain glass. Plain glass lets light pass through it. But a mirror reflects light. To turn a piece of glass into a mirror, people spray a special shiny coating on one of its sides that reflects everything. And then to protect the shiny coating, an extra layer of paint is put on top of it. But even with that protection, you still have to handle mirrors carefully. Because mirrors can easily scratch or even break. And do you think that this one is possible to fix? Yeah, we can do it. It's a good thing you have a pack of mat with you. I thought we might need it after you started screaming over here. Don't tell me you've got paint in there for a mirror. A pack of mat's got everything you'll ever need. It's all ready. <gasps> 
My dad's coming. Tom Thomas, what are you doing here? Checking if you hung it. Yeah, right. I'll definitely hang that mirror on the wall soon. Hmm, like tomorrow. Or next week. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, here, here we come. come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas? You didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No! Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone and give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. Down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're gonna be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out, but there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? 
Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> The prosthesis. Simka, over here. Take a look at what I found. <clears throat> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. Uh-huh. Uh Let's try to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little teddy bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait. It's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. The human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together, and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. Help is on the way. Hello, Professor Eugenius. Ah, I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What, have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis, a new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn-out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. In gadgets and devices, our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day, when there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tish. Inside will be Tish. all day. Right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. 
You found him for me. And you fixed him. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's just like Grandpa said. A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And pff, we're new. No, look, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. Tideesh! The flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik, but what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac up. Uh, uh, um, the pack -a -mac, and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack-a-mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. <laughs> A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka, and what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh.
Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed! Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over! What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight! Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three, lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, one two, two, three, three. Lights, lights light up the tree. The tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out, and we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no, what are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way, it's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia. Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papus, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papus, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh. Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits lie along. Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! On Christmas ah, Eve. nice box. The lights were brighter. Mwah! Every year when no one is expecting From some place that no one could conceive Appears a little miracle before us Every year on Christmas Eve 
Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. The clock it seems. On Christmas Eve. It's ticking slower. And suddenly. On Christmas Eve. A miracle. On Christmas Eve. No one believes. On Christmas Eve. Comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. The Magnifying Glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, Nolik, be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Shh, I have to solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane, but I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique, so if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called dactyloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Chusaka, sniff. Pick up the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is. A splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there. You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tanish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Ah! 
Simka, no, look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane, but whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tom Thomas, are the criminal! <laughs> <laughs> Friction. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack of mat, all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow! Talk about no friction! Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, uh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. 
we wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew. We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look, what is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. The elevator. Papu's uh. boss here. We gotta hurry. How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with him, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there... Hooray! We can go! Wait a second! I didn't even say yes yet! Yeah. Simka Nolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up! Tom Thomas, it's time to go! I'll be right there! We're ready! Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today! Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention please on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts. Our next act, feats of strength. It won't come out. I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. 
When getting on to an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you? Uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. Batteries. Oh, my little lemon, just you wait. One day you'll be a strong and splendid tree. <laughs> She's talking with a flower pot. <laughs> oh, you scared me. <laughs> Do you like it? Like what? My seedling. Don't you see? It will grow into a huge tree. And there, amongst the green leaves, will be beautiful yellow lemons. Class! From that thing, lemons? <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll grow into a tree. All it needs for that is to gather energy. Get energy from where? From our sun. <laughs> the sun? It'll be so slow. Oh, batteries would be faster than the sun. Batteries? I really don't think so. Tula, do you know how much energy they have? Let's just bury a bunch of those batteries in here, and you'll be watching your lemon plant shoot up into a tree. Are you positive? Absolutely. And where can we get the batteries? Over there. Professor Eugenius has a whole box full of them. Batteries! Batteries! We use them every day and need them by the ton. Batteries! Batteries! They give power to appliances so they can run. We'll be seeing the first lemons before the week's over. The first battery in the world was made in Italy more than 200 years ago. When two different kinds of metal were placed in salty water, electricity started flowing through a wire from one piece of metal to the other. Many years have passed since then, but batteries still work in pretty much the same way. Today, you can find batteries being used for electricity just about everywhere. Tiny batteries are used inside of wristwatches, while big batteries can power cars and even ships. With new batteries being produced by the millions, we have to think, how should we get rid of the old ones? You can't just throw away batteries because they'll poison our soil and water. The best way to dispose of batteries is to take them to a special collection station that sends them to factories for recycling. Yes, yes, it's a terrible idea to bury batteries. You can kill any plants that are growing there. <gasps> and this is the very reason why Professor Eugenius puts all of his used batteries in that box over there, so he can dispose of them properly. Hey, where are they? Oh, my seedling, we harmed you. What? Where are the batteries? They're in the flower pot. How come? So the lemons would grow faster? From the batteries? Who came up with that idea? It will die! Hurry! We gotta go save it! Hm, the soil's contaminated. We've got to find a new home for the seedling. But where? Over there. There's a pot with healthy soil. Let's do it! Batteries! Batteries!
<laughs> Don't cry, Tula. The seedling will be perfectly fine. It will grow big and strong with branches full of beautiful lemons and oranges. And watermelons. It's a lemon tree fire. Will you ever stop going too far, like with the batteries? Well, anyhow, batteries are cool, right? Look how many appliances can't work without them. You're right. Appliances can't work. Look, the seedling's coming back to life. <gasps> it really is. Tula, tell us, isn't it splendid? 